going to talk about mugs and we're going to talk about handles. So I'm going to hang out in, in this general area. Let's see where my, my lions are today. That was an assist. Sorry, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't call it oop, right? Is that what you do? Okay, anyways, uh, I'm gonna hang out right here. Now, there's three types of mugs we're gonna talk about. I don't think I'm gonna get to all three of them today. Um, and I'm gonna show you two of each so you can kind of see that. So we have a cylinder mug Okay, it's made out of, all of these are made out of slabs. So a cylinder mug with a handle. We have a tapered mug. Top and the bottom are different sizes with a handle. And then we have a tripod mug. Okay, we're gonna show you all three of those. And you get to choose which ones you do. Now, you, for this assignment, it's, you're gonna make two mugs. So you should write this down. This is for requirements. Two mugs with impressed or subtractive texture and with an added texture. And a handle. You are required to fire one. You can fire two, but usually what happens is we make one and you're like, eh, that's all right. You make another and it's better and you choose to get rid of the other one. So you fire one for sure, but I need to see both of them. So don't break your mugs until I've given you your grade. Okay, I wanna see progression. I wanna see what's going on. Um, aside to that, you do not have to put additive texture and subtractive or um, impressed texture on both mugs. One and one is fine or both, okay? Or one and two. You choose what that looks like. Okay, so we're gonna start doing a slab mug right there. So I'm gonna start by grabbing some things. So right here, We have cylinders. Okay, you see the cylinders? Now, the one you pick is up to you. I usually go with this gray one. It makes, um, what do we have in here? I don't care. Mm, maybe it's that one. It makes a, a good mug, okay? Uh, the, yeah, it's not this one. Um, the small black ones are smaller, and you can make those. Um, some of you might want to do a big one, okay? That's fine. Anyone want to guess how much clay you have to have to wrap around that cylinder? On lengthwise. How much? Two feet? Yeah, about two feet. Right, it's actually 22 inches, I believe. So it's about 24 with, with extra. That's just in one direction, and then however tall you want it to be. So that's a, that's a big old slab. But if you want to do that, you go right ahead. Uh, I usually recommend you do a smaller one first, and then if you want to go all double handle, big old mug, you go right ahead. Okay, so I have a cylinder. I'm gonna grab, and there's a whole bunch of them over here. Um, I'm gonna grab a couple of measuring sticks. And then if you look right here, I'll point to the camera, there's a whole bin of textures right there. And I'm going to pick some textures. Now, there's all kinds of things and you can choose what you want to do. There's little rollers, there are some letters I don't think the whole alphabet's in here. So look at those before you start stamping 
Um, there are some pre-made. This was made January 2020. Um, that's somebody's texture. They made it out of clay. Then we fired it, so you could use some of those. Um, another one. There are these are fondant textures. So for cooking and baking, you can use those. Um, remind me on Monday to show you. There's this guy that makes these really cool um, <laughs> Nike mugs. He makes these really cool Nike mugs, and uh, and I can show you those. And he actually casts forms from vintage Nikes to create his mugs. So the bottom um, is the tread of whatever. I'm not a big Nike fan, but they're cool. The mugs are. Okay, so I have my stuff. Um, oh, other things on this cart. For this one, you're going to need a piece of paper. And if on this cart, you're going to need some tape. Okay. And then we're going to kind of go from there. Now, oh, and you might want... You will. You'll want a piece of paper like this, eight and a half by eleven. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do this one here. Now I have to decide how tall and how big my clay is going to be. How much clay does it take to wrap around this, and then how tall do I want it? Now I'm going to tell you right now. I do mine at about five inches uh, on these gray cylinders. Now, if you don't want to pull out a ruler. That's 11 inches right there. So if we fold that in half, that's five and a half inches. So I'm gonna bring clay up to about there. That'll be five inches. If I go the other direction, that's 4.25 inches because it's eight and a half inches across on a eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So if you wanna do a smaller and a shorter cut, okay, excuse me a second. Nope. Um, and we're going to use this as a right angle as well. We've done that in the past. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my cylinder in my newsprint. You just need one piece of newsprint. You're going to wrap that fairly tight. And this is where it gets super important that you, you listen. When we tape this, I am going to tape newsprint to newsprint. I did not put any tape newsprint to cylinder. If I tape this down to the cylinder, when I go to pull the cylinder out, it's not going to come. So newsprint to newsprint only, and that'll fold this in. If you need a friend to help you with this, you certainly can. Put a little piece of tape there. Okay, and that's held on, but it moves. That's super important. Next, you don't have to fold that in, but I'm going to just to, to show you. The tallest you can make this cup, if this is my the top of my clay, and you really need to pay attention to this because it will cause you some headaches if you don't, the tallest is about three quarters of an inch down, okay? So if you're like, but I really want a mug that tall, then go find a cylinder that's taller, okay? So the tallest, and the reason for that is I'm gonna reach my hand in here and I need to be able to grab this cylinder. And if I can't get in there because there's clay in the way, you're gonna rip up your clay. It's gonna just cause you problems. So when you measure this, your clay can only go to that height. All right. Now, I'm going to wrap with my regular piece of paper. So as I wrap this, okay, if you can see that, it's going to wrap 
over. And I'm going to mark it right where it lines up. Okay, that's right where it overlaps. That is the absolute bare minimum you're going to cut. Now, when I say this, always add extra. So in this case, I'm going to add an extra inch or probably just my paper. Okay, so to wrap around a gray cylinder, light gray, I need 11 ish inches of clay. Okay. This is going to be less. Obviously, the other one's going to be more. Now, if that's the bare minimum to wrap around, now I need to pick my height. And again, you choose what that's like, but on this particular one, the maximum height that can make this is right there. Okay? So, looking at this, All the stuff down here is what is going to wrap around my cylinder. Okay? Now, when we throw out a slab, do you remember how it kind of tapers down on the edges? That's why we throw extra. So in this case, to wrap around my cylinder, minimum I need to throw out that piece of paper of clay. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes more sense as we, we go. And then I need a bottom, and then I need a handle. So I'm going to set these here, and I'm going to throw out some clay. And I'm going to kick up a little dust, so you might want to scoot back just a little bit. You can use recycled, you can use V-mix, you can use um, speckled clay. For most of you, you'll use V-mix. Just to show you again how to appropriately cut off clay, okay, we don't want to come and cut this in slivers. I'm going to come about right there. I'm going to put my left thumb on the back, and I'm going to pull my right hand with the wire to my thumb, and it gives me a pretty nice cut, okay? Now, from here, I'm going to tell you something real quick, and you need to not confuse it with what happens on the wheel. Every time you go on the wheel, you have to wedge your clay. If you don't, you're causing yourself a lot of headache. On this one, I'm going to come in right now. It was kind of like a cheese wedge. Now it's more flat. Move that. And without wedging, I'm going to throw this down. This is about the only time I can say you're going to get away with not wedging your clay because you're going to throw out a good slab. Now, I always throw out the length I need first and then I flip around for my width. Okay. I also want to throw out enough for a bottom, which is a the amount of clay that will go there, and then I'll take some of my scraps, wedge those up, and I'll make handles out of them. So, that's enough clay there. I'm going to rotate this, and that brings this up. If you have not passed off your um, technique pass-offs, you need to get on that. Um, it's still something that's super important to do. Okay, I throw that out. That looks good. If you need to, you can bring your little measuring sticks and kind of kind of check. Um, my needle tool. Oh, right there. Perfect. Okay, you can come in here and go. That's pretty uniform. Okay. Now, here's a hint for you. If you throw out a really thick slab and go to drink out of it, you're not going to enjoy your drinking experience. You want these to be fairly thin. Um, it's just the way our mouths work. We don't want a really thick um, cup. So you want to do it about that thickness. Okay? Um, and it's really hard to trim it up. There are some things we can do. Okay.
Now, what are some of the requirements? Textures, right? Okay, so two types of textures. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give a general idea of how big my, um, my slab is. So it goes to there, and it goes to there. I'm just going to make that large there. Can you see those lines? Okay, you see those lines? So that's slightly larger than the slab that I need. Now, to put impressed texture on, you need to do that before you wrap it on the cylinder. So those of you who are not paying attention to me should be um, before. And this is the reason why. So I'm going to show you right here. If I take a, a roller, I want you to look at the edge as I do this. Did you see what happened? I'll do it again. Oh, you can't see that. We'll do it over here. Did you see that move? Okay, if you didn't, it moves. Now, what that means is if I come and cut this nice straight edge piece, and then I come in here and I run my texture on it, I'm going to warp it, okay? So I want to do that, then cut the texture. Because somebody's gonna do this, and then they'll get it wrapped up on their, their mug, and they'll have one piece that's up here and one piece that's down here, because they, they warped it pretty heavily. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Now, applying texture is completely up to you. If you wanna throw out some slabs and mess around with what these look like, Okay, all these textures will react with the glaze. Um, I'll pass this one around, deep C. Where the textures are in, it pools and it goes dark. Where it's out, it goes lighter. So look at that, and almost all the, tech, all the glazes do that. So here's another hint for you. Where you're going to drink from, I don't put texture. So we call that the rim. Um, anywhere else can have texture. You can have texture there and lots of potters put it there, but I don't. So I usually come in and come right below where I'm going to drink. So we've got texture. Now that is enough texture, or you can do texture everywhere, completely up to you. Um, this is a little brick pattern. And I have some of these rollers. I'm just going to come in here and roll that down. Okay, peel it up. Now, I want to say this clearly, we are not under glazing these. We are going to be using our paint on glazes and our dipping glazes because it's a new glazing effect. And that's why we're doing textures and doing some other things. Okay. If I was gonna do additive texture, I could do that now. Almost always I do it later. Um, an additive texture really could be something like so. And you come in, like I'm gonna do a little half moon, whatever. Could be your initials, could be a flower, could be lots and lots of things. Just come in here and score that. The reason why I don't always do them before is when you bend it, it tends to warp it just a little bit. Add a little bit of slip. Push that down, pull it up. Why do we pull it back up? Yeah, so we can see we're gonna slip the next one. Press that down. Okay, and while we're doing this, um, if you want to pass around some of these mugs, you can kind of see what they're doing. Okay, you ready for the next step? This is where this paper comes in handy. It's a square, 45 degrees. 
So I'm gonna cut a flat bottom, a square side, a flat top, and I'm gonna leave one side long. Remember, we've already added some length. We're gonna leave it extra long. I'm gonna show you why. So I'm gonna come in here, line this up. This is gonna be my flat bottom. It could also be your top. Oops. You ever been to the dentist's office and they're like, oops. You haven't, your dentist is great. My dentist is great. Your hygienist is even better. Um, okay, do you see how I left the paper there? Because that's gonna give me a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna come in here. And on some of the things we talked about, we talked about cutting bevels, right? These are gonna be straight up and down for now. Line that up. Okay, here's the next thing. I need to cut this to the height that I want it. And if the height, the maximum height is that line, and I cut my whole paper, that clay is gonna stick way out over my cylinder. And it's gonna be way up here. And it's gonna cause you problems. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in here, and again, I like to do about a five inch, so I'm just gonna guesstimate by folding that, putting it there, making a little mark. I guess this is gonna be my bottom. Anyone wanna tell me why it's gonna be my bottom now? Because I put my textures there, and now I'm gonna cut right through them. Okay, then I'm going to line this back up. Except for I'm gonna line it up on the bottom edge here. Because this is straight. And if this is straight, then my two lines will be parallel. Okay. I'm going to line that up. You can also measure this. Cut that through. So in theory, from right there to right there and right there to right there are the same measurement or really close. Any, any questions so far? Okay. If you have big scraps like this and you're moving slow, please wedge them up and put them back in your bag. Now, as I look at this, this is now gonna be my bottom because I don't want to be drinking out of my texture. So I'm going to turn it this way. This is my top. And I'm going to flip it over. Anyone want to guess why, we, why I flip it over? Because when I roll it up, I want it on the outside. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to start to roll it up. I see my mark. I know I'm well below my, my, my limit, so I'm good there. I'm going to roll this up as tight as possible. Now I have a lot of clay, so I'm gonna cut a little bit off. Okay, see how my top on both line up? Where's my camera? So they line up the same. That means I cut properly. If one is way up and one is down, I cut not at a straight line. Okay. Um, as the things are coming around, the mugs, there's two types of seams that we can do. So I'll send this one around right now. This is a shown seam, so I, you can see the seam, right? So, and the other one I just sent around is a hidden seam. Um, and I, I'm gonna show you both. So we're gonna do the shown seam real quick. Now a shown seam, when you do this, it's gonna keep the thickness of your clay but it's really important that you make it look on purpose, okay? Just a, a chunky edge just kind of looks bad. But I have this little half moon here, so I could come in here and kind of mimic that. You can sort of see that line with the half moon, and that'll look pretty good. So I traced it, I did not cut all the way through it, 
and now I'm going to open it. Now a little hint for you, sometimes our clay and our cylinders will roll around. You might need to take a little piece of clay and put it there to hold it, right? But when you open it, make sure you don't just flop it open. We're going to open this. It's now upside down. I'm going to flip it carefully. If you grab this clay and you're just like flinging around like this, you're creating marks that are going to make this warp um, and, and want to crack. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to cut this like that. That kind of, kind of mimics that shape. Carefully flip that over and roll it back up. So what kind of a seam is this? A shown seam. Like we can see the seam. We did it on purpose. Um, some fun things you could do with this, like little buckles or something. If you want to do like a buckle texture, make it look like that. Or, um, oh, well, I don't know, there's lots of, lots of other things. Now, from here, I'm going to come in, just give that a quick trace. Then I'm going to open it back up again. That wants to roll and serrated rib. Right here. Okay, I'm going to open this. On this side, I'm going to use my serrated rib and on here. So where it overlaps, you need to score that. Add a little bit of slip just to one side. And then I'm going to gently roll that up. Okay, and get that pressed in. And that's our seam. We can come in and clean that up later. Yes? Can you put like the handle on the seam? You can, and I actually almost always put my handle on the seams, whether it's shown or not shown. It's just a good place to put it. What I don't do is put my handle here so that I'm drinking out of the seam. Okay. okay. Careful. That is rough. So I'm going to slip this back on. Nope, I'm not. So we're going to work through this. That sticks. Okay, we're going to set that aside for a second and do another one so that you can see. Now, if you have the paper, you can unfold this. If it's mangled up, you can just chuck it and grab a new, a new piece. Yeah, we got a new piece. So, same thing. I already know my measurements. So I'm gonna roll this up. And then I'm gonna tape my paper to my paper. And because I was kind of flinging my cup around, that's why the cylinder fell out. So try not to do that. Don't demo. Okay, I have a nice piece of clay right here. I know that's gonna be long enough, right? And then whatever height I want. So instead of throwing out another slab and adding texture to it, I'm just gonna work with this. So I'm gonna come in here and cut this. That bottom is flat. That side is still flat. We're going to cut this right there. This will be kind of a shorter mug. Put my measuring stick. Now, if you forget to put texture on, and some of you will, yeah, yeah. So if you forget to put texture on, let me tell you what you do. Do not grab your thing and some texture and push on your clay. You're going to mangle it. You're going to push your rim out of whack, um, you're gonna just cause some major problems. 
What you can do though, if you remember what I said the techniques are, is impressed or carved. So you can remove clay. So when it is um, leather hard, you can come in and carve designs into it. You can also add so you can score and slip stuff to it. Okay, so keep that, that in mind. All right, so I have that. I flipped it over. I'm going to roll this up. Now the last seam was what kind? A shown seam, right? So this one is gonna be a hidden seam. So I'm gonna cut this off just a little bit. Okay, we can see it, right? Remember on the cylinders, the freeform cylinders, how I told you to cut bubbles? We're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna come in here so you can see this, maybe. And if this is straight up and down, I'm gonna cut this at an angle. Now, as I do it, I wanna cut into my bottom piece, not away from. I don't wanna hit the edge, so I'm gonna cut into. So straight up and down, I'm gonna angle that, I'm gonna start pulling that towards me through both pieces of clay. Now do it on the ground. And I like to put my thumb at the, the bottom. So as I do it, it hits my thumb and doesn't go flying through. That'll open, take off those. And when we put those back together, you see how they overlap, but there's not a big bump. Okay, so this is called a hidden seam. And so from here, I'm gonna come in and wherever I put my serrated rib, right in front of me. I'm gonna score that. I'm gonna score where they're gonna overlap. Add a little bit of slip. And roll that up so that they are connected. Now, if you ever get to the point where maybe you cut it off because you're brand new at this, um, there are ways to fix that. If it's too long, you cut it again. If it's too short, we can open it up and roll it out just a tiny bit to push that, that length. So now we have this. Now, a couple of things for you. Compress that really well. Extra water is not your friend. So get that really worked in. Do you see how you can hardly tell there's a seam there at all? If you want, because it's in a cylinder, I could come in here and I'm gonna start from the top and roll down. And I've now covered up my seam with the texture. Okay, and you'll hardly know it was ever there. All right, set that aside. And I'm going to wedge this up and throw out slabs for my bottom. I'm gonna start on a handle. I'm gonna throw out slabs for two bottoms and then start on a handle. On, when are you guys here? Monday. Um, we are going to cover the other two types of mugs and we're going to cover handles as well. We're going to cover handles in a second too. But. Okay, now I'm going to wedge it. I'm going to throw it out. The bottom should be about the same thickness as your slab. If you need to roll it out, that's fine. It can have texture on it. There's nothing wrong with texture on the bottom, as long as it's not a sharp texture. You don't want something hitting your table and scratching it. Okay. So with this, I'm gonna come in here. So we have the bottom, it's in the cylinder. And before I move on, no matter where you get, let's say that's as far as you get today. So your piece should look like this, minus the cylinder, okay? Wherever you get to, and it's time to go, you have to take your cylinder out, have to. Uh, even if you bag it up really well, the clay is going to shrink enough, it's gonna suck tight to that cylinder, you're not gonna be able to get it out, and you're gonna to have to cut it off and start over. You have to take the cylinder out. Um, so just remember that. I'm gonna score the bottom. I'm gonna 
Add a little bit of slip. I'm going to set it wherever, right there. Lift it up. I'm going to score that spot. I do not cut this until it is scored and slipped and then put back down. Now, when I push down, I'm only pushing on the clay. If I come in here and push on my cylinder, it creates a cookie cutter and you will have a big hole in the bottom of your piece. Because if you can think about this, the clay is wrapped out here. It's not on the inside. So if you push down hard and it cut through like that, you've just created that that line. So don't do that. So come in here, wiggle that clay down. And we've talked about angles before. I'm going to come in at an angle. This does three things for me. One, it starts to seal up my seam immediately. Two, it gives me a place for my glaze to stop. So as the glaze moves, if it runs a little bit, It'll hit that little bit of a taper and it'll stop if you didn't overglaze. And that's really good. And three, if you look at the mugs I make, it adds a little shadow underneath them, which lifts them, which makes them feel lighter. If we have a piece that is just straight down, it automatically seems heavier. So it's a visual thing. So I pull this, I'm going to clean that up. Okay, set that aside, hurry and do this one. I don't have to have a cylinder to do this. So if you leave it and put it in a bag and come back on Tuesday and you bag this up really well, then you should be able to cut your bottom. Put that on there, pull it off carefully. My clay is still really soft. It's just not bending because I'm not like forcing it around, being careful with it. Okay, flip that over. And the same thing. I'm going to come in here and cut at an angle. It's not really flat. It's just right in between there, which is going to be like a 30 degree angle-ish. Thing. Cut that. Carefully flip that over. Now, I have just enough time to show you the first part of making a handle. And I want to show you a bunch of handles as we go. So we're going to do some more on Monday. Um, soft leather or soft workable is not the time to put a handle on, except if it's in a cylinder. If it's in a cylinder, I can push against it. So let's, let's see, we, why don't you grab, we grab me a sponge, just a small sponge. While I'm doing this, do you have any questions? Okay, so I'm gonna cut a little chunk out of this clay and I'm gonna make a coil. There are lots of ways to make handles um, and every potter has their own way to do them. This is a good way to make a good handle that's not overly complex. So I'm gonna take a chunk of clay and I'm just going to squeeze it into a big coil. Okay, semi-uniform. And then I'm gonna to start to roll it out. Now, I want to roll this out so it becomes about as thick as one of my dry erase markers. Okay, that's a good thickness for a handle. I'm gonna roll this out. And if you remember how to roll out, you're gonna kind of push it back and forth. It's okay if it goes a little wobbly. So we're going to mess with that, set this aside. Handles do not have to have texture. 
um, they do not count as additive texture, uh, but if you add texture to them, it will count as an imp impressed texture or additive, depending on what you're doing. The only exception would be, let's say you make like a dragon blah, 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 and sculpts like a dragon tail. And so there's sculpture and other stuff on there. Then I would count it as an additive texture. Okay, it's about right. And I'm gonna cut these. Sorry. Now, as we look at mugs, it depends on what type of a handle you're gonna do. But for the most part, I, t I want my handles to cover a good chunk of the mug. And as we do this, this is a three finger mug, which means when I made it, it was my four fingers could fit in there easily. This is a two finger mug because three is kind of tight for my hand. If you have smaller hands, that's a nice three finger mug. If you have bigger hands, that's a two finger mug. Um, but we're gonna go with the height plus a little bit. So if I measure here, I need from about here to about where my needle starts. So I'm just gonna cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. That'll be good. Um, yeah, we'll do some other handles on, on Monday. I like to taper my handles. So I'm gonna, I call it carroting. So I'm gonna taper one end so it looks like a carrot. The bottom is smaller than the top, okay? The top is what's gonna connect 100%, the bottom's gonna connect, but all the pressure happens at the top. We're gonna do that with a couple of them. Now as I'm doing this, if you have questions, that would be great. You can come in and add texture. And that flattens it out. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, we don't start with a slab. If you start with a slab and make a handle, you're going to create what's called a bacon handle, and it's going to flop. And it's going to look pretty bad. But if you start with a circle, and then we turn this into a handle, we massage this into place, it'll look like a good handle. Okay. I'm going to set that aside. thing for it for Monday. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can you can do with handles. Um, I'm going to come in with a little bit of water. I know water's not our friend, right? Squeeze that out. And I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to create a spine. Okay, you see how it's kind of triangular now? It could go on just like that or a lot of times I like to come in here and twist it. Okay, it could go on like that, or a lot of times I come in here and I will throw that down. And it has a flat side and a decorative side, and it's a, just a nice looking, nice looking handle. Um, if you wanna braid something, you can. Braiding is tough when it comes to clay, but it's, it's possible. Um, if your clay starts to dry out, you can come in and add just a tiny bit of water as you massage this into place. Um, let's attach one. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll attach one. So I'm gonna do this again. I usually like to make my handles and then let them sit for about five to 10 minutes and they get just a little bit firmer. Um, so when you attach it, it, it works. Now, when I attach this, I'm gonna use this as my platform. Um, I usually attach them on the side of the table so that when I do it, the end can hang off the table. Okay, so for you, you can do it off the side of the table or you can do it kind of like what I'm doing. So this is a straight up and down piece. So I need to cut this straight up and down. So I like to use my, my needle tool and I'm gonna come in 
right here and cut this straight up and down. Come down here and cut that straight up and down. Okay. Then I'm going to score it. You can use a needle tool or your serrated rib. You're going to add a little slip. And then you're going to place it wherever you want. I usually put mine on my seam. So I'll come in here and I'll put it there, line it up, put the bottom, then I'll come in here and score it. Now here's a little hint for you. As you're making handles, I would make three or four for every mug you make. And then you can pick the one that's gonna work the best. Instead of just being like, oh, I made that and I'm gonna settle for what it looks like. Um, spend a little bit of time. So I scored and slipped that, getting it pushed together. Remember, water is not our friend. So I'm really kind of manipulating this into place. The most important part of the handle is right here where my index finger is. Because that's where all the weight goes. I'm gonna lift that. And then I come in, I'm gonna use my needle tool. And I'm going to kind of compress this. Um, if you ever, no. If there ever was a time that nails come in handy, it's making handles. Because you can come in here and like finagle around the handle and get it compressed really well. And in fact, there are potters who keep one pinky nail long so that they can work their, their mugs. It's not me. Either that or they're Coke fiends. Like Coca-Cola. Okay, get that in there. We will see you on Monday. Be here, be ready, we'll do more demos. Thursday, we are starting this project.